أنا نينوى أنا نينوى يا سادتي أشور عز بدولتي الأنبياء الأولياء الصالحون بباحتي كم ألف عام قد مضت فيها أقمت حضارتي العار يلحق بالعدا وأنا سيبقى العز لي أنا موصلي So right now we're in the car and we are heading to Mosul. How's it going, Ahmed? Excited? Amazing. Yeah? I'm super excited. <laughs> it's going to be Ahmed's first time in Mosul and exactly. uh, first time in the north of Iraq other than Kurdistan region. Um, so yeah, it's going to be something different. And Sultan here is inviting us. Uh, Sultan is studying at uh, Mosul University, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, super excited. After a five hour drive from Baghdad, the capital city of Iraq, we finally entered Mosul. Mosul is the third largest city in the country, after Baghdad and al-Basra. For those that don't know, Mosul was taken over by ISIS, or Daesh terrorists, in 2014. And it wasn't until July 2017 that the city was fully recaptured by the Iraqi army. That means three brutal years under ISIS control in addition to bombs dropping from the sky in the battle to retake the city. I've just, I've just arrived in Mosul and my friend Abdullah has come to and, and received me and has taken me to this gorgeous restaurant. Yes. Um, how's it going Abdullah? Uh, it's actually nice. The, the weather today is like a little bit strange. <laughs> However, it's like uh, it's uh, summer actually here, but uh, there was like you can see that there's clouds and some of the rain. So it's one of the Muslims uh, like the main <laughs> main advantage being in Iraq. So the weather is not that hot compared to South Africa. Sure. So I was in Najaf yesterday, and yeah. the, the weather in Najaf was really really hot compared yeah, to this. Yeah, you can see like, like yeah. the weather actually is very nice after the start, after like uh, right. at the night. Very nice. And fresh air, and uh, we enjoy like sitting in the gardens and stuff. Sure, alright, thanks. The restaurant was located by this small river and had recently opened. I ate this delicious local Mosuli meal called Kuzi, which is basically slow cooked lamb with rice and delicious sauce. The following morning, we headed to the Bashtaiba Castle, a ruined 12th century castle that was partially destroyed by ISIS in 2015. So right now um, we're on top of a castle uh, in the old city of Mosul called Bashtaiba Castle, if I'm not mistaken. And there's the view of the Tigris River and uh, the eastern side of the city um, on the other side of the river there. So over there you can see on one of the bridges that crosses the Tigris River, you can see that the bridge was destroyed during the war. but. They have built something to overcome that, and the bridge is still crossable. The view from Bashtabia Castle, however, was much better when we went there on another day for sunrise. Anyhow, after our first visit to the castle, we decided to explore the Old City, which is located in what is known as the right side of the city, known in Arabic as Janib al-Ayman. This part of the city is where ISIS made its final stand and is hence the area with the most destruction. So right now I'm in the old city of Mosul and behind me is uh, a church called Kenisa al Tahira. And um, in February 2020, uh, 2021, sorry, uh, the Pope was visiting Mosul and he held a mass right here. Uh, unfortunately, the church uh, is quite destroyed, but the Pope stood uh, on that podium right behind me there. 
It was the Pope's first visit to Iraq, where he visited Baghdad, Ur, Erbil, Mosul, and the nearby Christian village of Qaraqosh. The visit to Mosul in particular was described by many as being symbolic. So right now we are inside of the church uh, that the Pope came to visit. Uh, and unfortunately the area was highly destroyed. Um, there was a lot of damage um, during the battle against ISIS and by ISIS, of course. So unfortunately, this is the condition that it is in. We were just wandering around the ruins of this old church and we came across this a book published by ISIS. In the evening, we went to a place known as Mu'essasid Beitna, which is basically an old traditional Mosuli home that doubles up as a heritage museum, shisha cafe, intellectual hub and more. And of course, we met this man who was more than keen to recite his nationalist poetry to us. We also saw this on the way out. Before we left Mu'essas at Baitna, one of the owners decided to show us this, a coin produced by ISIS in the pursuit to create their own currency. Their currency, however, never managed to get into circulation. The following day, we headed to the nearby Christian town of Qaraqosh, also known as Baghdada or Al Hamdaniya. That's right, it's got three names. The first being given by the Ottomans, the second being Assyrian, and the third being Arabic. Like Mosul, this town was captured by ISIS. But unlike Mosul, most of the local Christians have returned, and funding to help rebuild has been plentiful. The town of Qaraqosh was another one of the places on the Pope's itinerary in Iraq, which is why you can see the Vatican flag flying around the town. Okay, so we just visited this beautiful church in Qaraqosh. Um, it's super old. Uh, unfortunately, a few years ago, this whole area was under the occupation of ISIS, um, but the buildings are still here. Um, and we just saw a religious ceremony which is going, which is going in on inside the church. Sultan, could you explain uh, what this ceremony was? So it's called the uh, Salat Maryamiya, which is something they, they do after uh, the speak, Easter. Speak up of it. Uh, they do it after the Eid al Qiyam, after the Easter, right. like in the, in the month, which is like a weekly event, which is called Salat Maryamiya. So that's like one of the weeks. Salat al Maryamiya. Yeah. Okay, so there was um, Salat al Maryamiya that uh, we just experienced inside this beautiful church. Right now, we're in the center of Qaraqosh, um, also known as Baghdada, and you can see the atmosphere at night. Uh, there's the beautiful church behind us right now. Um, it's really gorgeous and um, yeah, this whole town is Christian. Uh, the whole population, 100% of the people here are Christians. Um, so it's a very unique experience to see this in Iraq. Something that I haven't yet mentioned about this beautiful town is that it is controlled by a local Christian group known as Wahdat Hamayat Sahel Nainawa or the Nainawa Plains Protection Unit. In order to enter Qaraqosh, even for Iraqi nationals, you need to know somebody that lives there to sponsor you. When it got dark, we returned to Mosul, and we spent the following day with our friends by the Tigris River. So we're just about to get on a boat uh, for a ride in the Tigris River. Super excited for this. While it might have seemed like a joy-filled adventure, 
and in some parts it certainly was, there was also a much more somber side to this boat trip. Prior to 2019, a ferry used to operate here, bringing people from the banks of the Tigris River to a touristic island in the middle. This island had a ferris wheel, cafes, green spaces and more. It was supposedly a lovely place to hang out. But in March 2019, due to overcrowding on board, one of these ferries capsized and more than 100 people died, including children. Many of those people were celebrating Nowruz, the Kurdish New Year. I remember being in Iraq when this happened, teaching English in the southern city of Najaf. The whole country was shocked by yet another tragedy. But actually being here, seeing the exact place where it happened, felt really tragic. We then returned to the old city for some more exploration where we visited some old churches and mosques. We just jumped the wall and entered this beautiful old church in the old city of Mosad. You can see the church tower behind me right now. Interestingly, many of the Christian inscriptions remained intact, something which I did not expect following ISIS occupation. They did, however, write their symbols on the wall. In the evening, we went to this gorgeous restaurant by the river. The interesting thing about this restaurant is that they don't actually sell food. You just pay an entrance fee and you bring your own food. We noticed this to be quite common in Mosul. Guys, so we just arrived at this awesome place and Abdullah and Ibrahim brought some amazing food for us from the house. Thank you so much guys. What is, what is in this? Dolma. Dolma. Wow. Dolma is basically Iraq's national food, and there's nothing more delicious than dolma. It's basically just stuffed grape vines and vegetables, and it has many regional variations. But in Iraq, they stuff it with rice and meat, and it's amazing. That's all for this video. However, make sure you subscribe if you want to see part two where you'll see me visit the ancient ruins of Hatra, also known as Al Hadar in Arabic, where I believe we were the first foreign tourists to visit since the liberation from ISIS. You'll also see me visit a rarely visited nearby Yazidi town called Bashiqa and watch their celebrations. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram to see more details about my trips to Iraq, Syria and other places.